myself forever be in debt to to Neil Lennon. He gave me my opportunity. Prof- he made me a professional footballer. I find myself translating for obviously some of the foreigners that come here that speak English. I'm ending up having to translate for them, which is uh, if you had told me that six years ago, I'd have been like, ah, no chance. There's no chance that's happening. Coming up on the Celtic FC podcast, we speak to former Celt William Henderson on his Celtic journey and we talk about his life in Italian football. This is the official Celtic FC podcast. Welcome to the official Celtic FC podcast. We've got a very special guest with us all the way from Italy, a former Celt, of course, 37 appearances for the boys in green and white. I'm delighted to say I'm mean, joined by an Italian Scot, Liam Henderson. Liam, how are you and how are you enjoying your time out in Italy? I am really good. Uh, really good. Life's been good. Uh, I've obviously been here six six years now, so I, I've uh, obviously really, really liked the country and uh, no, I'm doing good. Everything's good. I see that you've recently got married as well. How's married life treating you? Yeah, good. It's been good. It's been good. So I've got my wife Rebecca out here with me uh, now permanently, especially after Brexit. Brexit made it a wee bit more difficult, but now that we're married, she's out here. Uh, she's out here with me. So hi, she's enjoying the Italian life as well. The good weather, the good food. So it's uh, it's going pretty good. Life's life's been good. Eh? Life's been good. Let's go back to your uh, the start of your career, Liam. Tell us about your journey through the Celtic Academy and becoming a professional footballer and ultimately making your your debut for Celtic. No, it was good. It was uh, really good. Obviously, a long a long hard process. A lot of a lot of hard nights training at Barryfield, Lennox Town, a lot of travelling back and forth, because obviously I'm from like Livingston area, from Broxburn, so there's a lot of travelling back and forth. Uh, Robert Wilson, who obviously he came and picked me up, who worked for worked for you guys, he was a scout, and then obviously done like the minibus, the minibus drive and came and took me four nights a week uh, through to Barryfield and through to Lennox Town. So he's got, I've got a lot to be thankful for, uh, for him, and obviously mum and dad, grandparents and that as well, family who, Took me here, there, and everywhere. But I, it was really good, really good upbringing uh, as a as a person as well. Education, uh, educational wise as well through through the club, and uh, I got the probably I'd say I got the the winning mentality kind of kind of obviously playing for Celtic. I know it's all about in, improving and, and getting better as a player, but they give you obviously that winning mentality that you need to go in and and look to be winning games for as young as uh, thirteen years old. I so it was a Great upbringing. I couldn't have asked for a better, uh, better, better upbringing in, in football than 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 at Celtic. When you look back on those days, Liam, who was you know a, an important figure in your development going through the academy at Lennox Town and obviously in your school days? Yeah, there was loads. To be fair, there was loads. Obviously, Willie McNabb. He brought me. Uh, he brought me to Celtic. Uh, he was one of the ones uh, along with Martin Miller who really pushed for me to push for me to come. So they had a big influence. Probably as I got older, Mio Drag. Provokovic had a huge, uh, huge impact on me as a young player, and I still keep in touch with me all, still keep in touch with me all today. So he's a uh, he's a big lover of Italian football and that as well. I think he played with a few, a few players when he played uh, that came to Italy, and he knows knows quite a few folk who've who've came out here and played. So he's he was really really influential on me, kind of moulded a wee bit my playing style and how I wanted to play football. So he was someone. Uh, I really, really listen to and someone to this day I still still look to for uh, for advice. You made your debut back in 2013 under the guidance of Neil Lennon at Fur Park. You then had your first start against Kilmarnock. Tell us about that time and what was the guidance of the manager Neil Lennon like back then? No, it was amazing. Obviously Celtic, uh, when I was coming through, there was a team full of internationals and especially they were really, really strong in midfield. So obviously get an opportunity to play Play for Celtic at that time, being so young, was was amazing. Obviously, I'll forever be in debt to to Neil Lennon. He gave me my opportunity. And prefer, he made me a professional footballer, if, if I can if I can say it like that. So I'll forever be in uh, debt to him. And obviously, Gary Parker and Johan Johan Mialbi, along with Danny McGrain, who was in the coaching staff uh, then, they were they were brilliant for me. They helped me improve uh, as a seventeen year old boy. Kind of kind of made me a man. So, like I say, I'll forever be in debt to that to that coaching staff, obviously along with the boys uh, that played in the team as well that I looked up to, Bruni, Joe Ledley, Adam Matthews, James, who's uh, obviously still there, they took me, they took me under their wing and uh, I'll, I'll forever be grateful, grateful for that. 
You um, played in the, the, the title winning night at Fur Hill, a 5-1 victory against Partick Thistle. You scored that night. Many you know, young Celtic players coming through the academy would have dreamt of moments like that. How, did, how was it for you, Liam? No, that was amazing. Obviously, to score it's, uh, it's so young and to uh, win the title on the same night. I had my, my brother Jamie, my dad, uh, in the crowd as well, so it made it even more special. But there was two dummies, I think. One was for Chris Commons and then one was always for Griff. And normally they're taking, taking a shot there, so I'm surprised they, they both dummy it to let it, come, uh, let it come all the way through to me. But I, like I say, it's what every young boy kind of kind of dreams of coming through the coming through the academy at Celtic to score for the score for the first. Going to Italy and we'll touch on that in a, a little bit, but you went out to Norway as well. You went on loan to Rosenberg. Again, these are like waters where not many Scottish um, players tend to tread. How was it for you to go out to Norway and did it give you a taste of that European continental football that you're experiencing now? I think it. I think it was really good, especially for me I, I, at such a young age. I was kind of cut, obviously grew up close to mum, dad, had all my friends, family, etc., etc. And you can sometimes get a wee bit comfortable. So even at that young age, I was trying. I was wanting to get a little bit uncomfortable, go and live away from home, and uh, experience a different kind of football. And the the education I had at Rosenberg as well was was really, really, really like top top education because they try and do it like Ajax. So they play like the four three three system, and maybe that was one of my problems as a young player. I used to try run about everywhere to, to get the ball, but when I went there, I really had like a discipline about how to play the my position. The coach was great, and obviously they went on to win the the double that year, which I was I played a part in. So there you get like a medal on that as well. So for my short time there, I absolutely loved it. Great city with with great people and great people win that win the club as well. I suppose this is the part where Hibernian fans, if they're watching or listening, will probably get their ears up a little bit. How often does Liam Henderson to deliver follow you around? Aye, a lot, to be fair. Not as much as uh, since I've left, but obviously there's uh, great admiration there for myself with, with, with the Hibs fans. Obviously, the exact same with the Celtic fans. Any time I've ever bumped into any Celtic fans that have been coming over early for holidays and that when I've been flying back over to... Uh, start the season, I've all been really, really dead complimentary and they seem to be keeping an eye on me, which, again, I can only thank them for because, uh, like he says, I played a few games, a few games and I, were, I played 37, it's not it's no a great amount, but I managed, to, I managed to do that, but they, Celtic fans have been uh, amazing with me, even this the small amount of times that I go on to Twitter, uh, they're always looking out for me and always seem to be wanting me to do well, so... Like I said, it's a great fan base, and for me, it's it makes me really proud that they can they continue to continue to look out for me. So that really really means a lot. Even just if we reflect on that Scottish Cup final in twenty sixteen, you know Hibs won that three two for you. You were playing in the Championship at the time under Alan Stubbs. That was a great ending to uh, any season, I imagine, especially in a loan spell trying to get experience. No, it was amazing that season. We had a really good uh, a really good team. Good uh, young team, all boys, similar age. So it was enjoyable uh, to go into training every day. Obviously, Stub, the, the gaffer there, and Stub C, he, he had a really good, uh, really good football and career. And him and his staff again had a had a huge part in the the player I am today. But no, it capped off a great season. We obviously missed it on promotion and got beaten the League Cup final as well. But to win the Scottish Cup and uh, in the manner that we did against opposition that we did was. Uh, was made it even made it even more special. You played with um, John McGinn. I imagine he was a bit of a character in the dressing room. Aye, John was John was great, and it's uh, he, he obviously everybody knows big Celtic fan as well, John. So it was a special special day for him. Uh, but no, he was brilliant. He was brilliant. He's a couple of years older than me. We had a great time. Became really really good friends, and it's amazing. It's amazing what he's doing. Obviously, captain Aston Villa and how he's playing for Scotland. So it's great to see him doing doing extremely well as as well. You obviously came back to Celtic at the same time Brendan Rodgers came to the club. Just tell us a little bit about working with him, especially in that season. Uh, Celtic went un undefeated. Just tell us what was it like to, to work with the man? No, amazing. Obviously, he's a top uh, top level coach. Uh, I think everybody know everybody in world football world football knows that, and to get Brendan to come. Uh, to Celtic, especially after after him being at Liverpool, was a massive coup for for Celtic and obviously for Scottish football. 
Uh, he improved the improved everything around, in and around the club uh, massively. Helped improve my game. Uh, leaps leaps and bounds gave me little pointers, little tips here and there along with his uh, his uh, staff like Chris Davies and obviously Kendall Kendall was there with him as well. So I no, he was he was brilliant, brilliant, brilliant coach, brilliant man manager, and uh, hopefully has a as a six is as success, successful this time around as he was uh, the first time around. Oh, we hope so as well, Liam. Obviously, this is the point where uh, Celtic, your your time comes to an end, and, and you move out to uh, to Italy and, and Bari in twenty eighteen. Tell us, you were the first Scot to go out to the Italian football scene in almost thirty years or so. Tell us, was there a bit of ba- bravery to to make that decision? And I, I take it you've not looked back since. I obviously there was uh, I went over for a for a bit. Celtic were really good with me again. They let me go over and look at the place and that before actually signing. So that was really really good with them because obviously I think they realised it was a it was a big step for a for a young young Scottish boy to try and go and play football in the South Italy. So I I went over, I signed and uh, obviously there's doubts come into your mind like I'm going to be away from home. This is this is it. Like I'm going to be away from home. I'm going to try and forge a forge a football career. Out in Italy, a kind of different pathway to most young uh, young Scottish players. But I, uh, I'm like I say, I'm loving it. I've been here six, basically six years now, and I've, uh, I, I'm loving it, absolutely loving it. I think the football, the lifestyle, and everything suits me. So it's been, uh, it's been a great decision, football, football wise and lifestyle wise as well. It's been, it's been a, it's been a great, great decision. You talk about the positives there, but I imagine there would have been some challenges, of course, to. To get out to Italy, you've only played in Scottish and a bit in Norwegian football, but I imagine Italian football can be can be a bit more tactical, a bit more different. Tell us a bit about that. Ah, no, it was obviously a big a big difference to what I was used to in Scotland. It's much much more uh, much more tact- tactical. Obviously, the language barrier was difficult as well for the first couple of years. It took me a wee bit to get to get used to the language and that, but now I'm 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 good with the language, so that helps. I find myself translating for obviously some of the foreigners that come here that speak English. I'm ending up having to translate for them, which is uh, if you had told me that six years ago, I'd have been like, "Ah, no chance. There's no chance that's happening." But yeah, I've uh, took it my stride. Bit difficult. Some lonely times as well. Obviously, being out on uh, on my own and my obviously my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, she was at university, so it was like a bit long distance for uh, the first couple of years. But no, stuck it out, stuck it out, and uh, aye. Stuck it out and see how, see how many more years I'll be here for. Obviously, when you went out to Italian football, you were one of the, the first Scots, obviously, to go out since the 1980s. Now you've had Aaron Hickey, Josh Doig and, and Lewis Ferguson. As a Scot out in Italy, you, you must be quite proud of the progress those guys have um, done in the Italian football scene. No, it's amazing. It's amazing. Like I say, is I, I managed to come out the, the first one in 30 years and I, I feel like I gave the... The Scottish boys are a good name, if, if, if I can put it like that. I think that they realise they can get really, really good. The Italian clubs realise they can get really, really good footballers for obviously a fraction of the price that they would pay for uh, from boys from other countries, whether it be Brazil, whether it be England, whether it be... I think they realise they can get really, really good down-to-earth, hard-working, good footballers. So I, I take a bit of pride in the fact that I was the first one to, to make the step and all the boys that you mentioned have done, uh, done absolutely brilliant. And hopefully there's more. Hopefully, there's more that can uh, that can that can venture it here. It'd be it'd be nice for me to play with my wee brother. It'd be nice for me mm. to play with my wee brother out here in Italy. So maybe one day he can make the make the step out here as well. I was just going to come on to that because not only have you played for Celtic, but you and your brother also played for Celtic as well, which I imagine filled you with immense pride. He's currently in in Belgian football at the minute. How's he getting on? And I, I imagine that you are in close contact with him. No, I, he's he started the season. He started the season brilliantly. He's getting uh, he's getting rave reviews over there in Belgium. So I think that again was good for him to get out his comfort zone, get 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 a little bit uncomfortable. But he's taking it in his stride, and uh, I'm extremely proud of him. He started well. He's got four goals or something in the house. So uh, he's doing uh, he's doing brilliant. And like you say, it's for two brothers to have played for Celtic, it doesn't happen very often. So that's something that I think. Uh, my whole family are extremely, extremely proud of as well. That's that's a that was a that was a big thing. That was a really, really big thing. You spoke about making thirty-seven appearances. I always think the Celtic fans, even if you make one appearance, you always make your mark in yourself and, and you and have rightly done that. 
Is there any advice you would give to any player? You've just spoken about players that might want to venture out to Italy or even Spain, Germany. What advice would you give to any player looking to make that move out to the continental European scene? Yeah, obviously, if, if I was playing for Celtic every single week, it wouldn't have even came into consideration because for me, there's no, there's there's only a handful of clubs bigger bigger than Celtic in world football. So if I was playing for Celtic week in, week out, obviously it wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have happened. But obviously I had to make the step for to better myself. And uh, no, I would I would recommend that. I would obviously give the advice that it is going to feel a wee bit daunting. You are going to feel, there is going to be days when you feel a wee bit lonely and a really bit homesick. But if you can get through that and just um, obviously fight through that, the, the homesickness is probably the worst, especially in the early stages. If you can fight through that, You've got a great education football wise and you'll become you become a become a much better player, obviously getting different techniques, different uh, views on football. So I, I would I would highly recommend it. And I think for the national team, for the Scotland national team, it can only improve the the Scotland national team. The more players we have playing different kinds of football, I think it can uh, stand as a good stead for the for the future. You're absolutely right, William. Just to kind of round things off here, go back to, to Celtic. How are you enjoying the team playing at the minute? Are you keeping up with you know, the Celtic uh, scores over in Italy? I imagine there's a few Celtic supporters clubs you could probably get along to. Aye, a few folk on Twitter have obviously contacted me saying, oh, I'm a Celtic fan in Verona, I'm a Celtic fan in Palermo. So I know when, when I can watch, obviously, when I can watch, obviously, Celtic, uh, it's a bit difficult, obviously, because we're playing and we're travelling a lot. Um, but aye, when I can uh, when I can get the games, I'll obviously stick them on. I loved I loved watching them under Ange last year. I thought they were it was breathy. It was a breathy fresh air for me to watch Celtic under Ange. And obviously Brendan's obviously continued that this year, and they've been been really good to watch the way they're playing high high intensity attacking football. So no, it's been to watch Celtic for far. It's been it's been a pleasure the past couple of years. Is there any memorable moments from your time at Celtic? Any any stories that you might want to share? Uh, no, I think maybe the most special was obviously making my debut after obviously the all the hard work, and then I managed to make uh, come on in a Champions League game for Celtic. So to come on and play with the Champions League ball, have the Champions League crest on the on the strip, and that I think that was one one moment that I'll probably take to my take to my grave, and obviously represent Celtic's massive. It's, for like I say, it's one of the biggest clubs in the world. So to get the chance to even rep- to represent them thirty seven times, it was. Uh, was something that I, I hold really, really dearly and, and closely to me. And just to, to round off, Liam, you know, what's the future looking like for Liam Henderson? Is it Italian football, Italian lifestyle, or do you look to maybe one day come back to Scotland and, and play here again? Yeah, obviously, I'm, I'm here at Palermo, so the first thing is to try and get Palermo back to Serie A. That's the most, uh, most important thing uh, for me just now in the short term. But I, I think Italian football, I'd love to try my try my hand in Spain. I'd love to go and play in South America as well. I think that's something that I've always uh, it's been on the bucket list to go and play in South America. So I and then we'll see to come back and play in Scotland. I don't know. We'll, we'll wait and see. But I've got some some other stuff that I would uh, like to tick off before uh, before I maybe come back and, and play in Scotland. Well, William, thanks for joining us today. Best of luck in Italy, and who knows, we might see you in Argentina one day. Ah, thank you, thank you, it was a pleasure, cheers.